than the other ones that people use. I don't know why. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today, we have an amazing story, not only 160 pounds lost, but a life forever changed. Today's guest was a barbecue chef, and now he is a wonderful chef without using animal products, a huge proponent of a plant-based diet. I know you're going to love his story. Before I introduce him, I just wanted to say, if you missed the show yesterday, we had on a chef who did a class in making jewelry, and I took the class with you guys, and I made my first pair, so it wasn't that hard. I don't think today's chef has any earrings on, so he's probably not interested in this, but please welcome Chef Jeff to the show. It's very nice to meet you. You have an incredible story. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I, I just love it. I mean, even if it was just a weight loss story, that's, you know, like they say at Passover, it would have been enough, Dianu. But just that, you know, walking away, it, it can't be easy to walk away from how you're making your money. Um, it, yeah, certainly it was difficult. I, uh, you know, had a, had a barbecue restaurant for about six years. And over the course of that six years, I gained 20 to 25 pounds a year. And um my health just continued to get worse and worse. And I, and I, and I had to do something. Yeah. So how did you first hear about a plant-based diet or think to even go on one? Um, well, the, I'll get into more details uh, on that, but it was, it was from my mom. That's great. I love, I love, I, cause it seems like everybody hears about it from somebody. There's always like that one person right. that either influenced them or told them about it. So yay, mom. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. But you're still a barbecue chef. You just don't barbecue animals anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I grill sometimes, whether it's uh, putting veggie kebabs on the grill or today, I think I'm going to do a simple like um, potatoes and and carrots and onion, kind of like the uh, Boy Scout, you know, camp style. Um, I, I forget what you call those, but you know, put it together in the in the foil pack and throw it on the grill for for about twenty minutes. Uh, and then today we're going to show you how to do corn riblets, which I'll have with my uh, with my potatoes and carrots later. Well, I can't wait. So are you, are you ready? Should we get going? I am ready. I, am ready. I, I love, and I, I mean, like, you know, when it comes to condiments, barbecue sauce, my whole life, I was never a ketchup person. It was just kind of like too, I don't know, just, I don't know. I just never liked ketchup, never really liked mustard, but I, I hate ketchup. And a barbecue sauce. Like I would put it on everything like French fry. I mean, like it's, it's like my favorite condiment. So anything that has that flavor, I'm just crazy about yeah, I agree there. I, I yeah, actually ketchup grosses me out um, just because I think there's better things to put with tomatoes than sugar and vinegar. Um, you know, that to me is meant for pickles, but <laughs> I, I think it's a, it's a, an odd thing. I've never liked it. Well, maybe when I was really a young kid, but at some point it grossed me out probably from uh, early restaurant days. I worked at a, uh, one of those 24 hour Perkins restaurants and I used to take the ketchup bottles that sat on the table the entire time. They'd empty them in a big corral and funnel them down to a, to a, uh, a, a single bottle to fill them back up to make them, you know, be a full, look like a fresh bottle, wipe off the, the lid of it. But, you know, people used to stick their straw wrappers and pennies and things like that down in those ketchup bottles. And so it just kind of grossed me out. And the smell was real overpowering, too, because you've got so many bottles that you're draining into that ketchup corral and uh ever since then i just haven't touched the stuff that grosses me out but yes barbecue sauce uh is is great and uh with this recipe uh that we're going to do today i believe you're linking the recipe and at the bottom of that is my favorite which we used in the in the barbecue restaurant which is a kansas city style um barbecue sauce recipe and it's oil free uh, that you can you can give a try it's a little labor intensive it used to take us you know four to five hours to simmer and that's certainly the same the same way with the uh, the barbecue sauce recipe but I, I love barbecue sauce and, and I'm a big fan of the red onion style so I have some of that today that I'll show you can't wait okay let's get cooking 
So what I'm going to do here today is start you off with, you're in my kitchen, and we're going to do a fun little recipe called the corn riblet. Now, I've seen a few of these um, recipes online, and uh, I, I watched a guy actually cut his fingers several times. So I want to teach you how to not cut your fingers. And I want to show you how easy and fun this little recipe is. Um, the first thing that I want to do is show you that you can take a, take a corn ear and break it in half really easily. I've seen people try and cut this down from here and it slide all over the place and them cut their fingers. And so I want you, I want you to avoid that. So you want to make sure you got a good level thing and you're not bouncing all over the place. This is a real heavy duty. Um, non-bendable knife, so it's not going to go anywhere. You got to make sure you have some control over it and get your fingers out of the way because you've got to press down pretty hard to get through a corn cob. And you just can rock it back and forth. Make sure that your knife is sharp. And then I'm just going to cut through it this way. We're going to rock back and forth on that until it goes through. So that's really all there is to that uh, for cutting the corn. So you're leaving the cob on and that would be, you know, if you were sadly eating ribs, that might be like the, the, the rib portion if you're, if you're uh, eating ribs from an innocent little pig. And then what I've got here is a real simple uh, seasoning recipe. I've got a teaspoon and a half of chili powder. I've got about a half a teaspoon here of onion powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of granulated garlic, about half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and smoked is the key if you wanna give it that smoky flavor without putting it on a smoker, and then a little bit of cayenne pepper we're gonna to use to give it a kick. So all I'm gonna do is get this mixed up really well. And if you follow Chef AJ and some of these other people from Forks Over Knives and whatnot, you know that oil is not health food. I hope you know that. And so when I cook, I keep just a teapot on my stove that's got water in it. And you can water saute, just use a good nonstick pan. And what I'm gonna do with this is add a little bit of water and we're gonna mix this up until it makes kind of a, a thick slurry. So it's a real simple, simple mix. I probably used just a little bit too much water. I got a little overzealous, but that's all right, it'll stick. And then this recipe can be done in a number of different ways. If you want to, you've seen these, this is a copper crisper. And if you don't want to, um, purchase an air fryer, this is a great alternative. Now for me personally, my girlfriend uses an air fryer and loves it. She swears by it, uses it all the time. I don't want to store it. I've got enough appliances between mixers and blenders and <laughs> food processors and all that kind of stuff that I don't want to store it. So this is an option for an air fryer. You can put a little water down in the bottom for some steam, some moisture. You can put it in there and throw it in the oven. You could do that on parchment paper, you can do it on an air fryer, but for simplicity today, and so I'm not walking out to my garage where my, where my big oven is, um, I'm just using a little tray from the toaster oven, the little foil on it, and we're going to do this in the toaster oven because you can actually do it in the toaster oven as well. And we're just gonna take these little riblet pieces like so, and then, oh, that slurry actually came out pretty nice. You can, you can see that that's nice and thick, which is what you want. We're gonna brush these, these little corn riblets with our spice mix. And you want it to kind of get down into the, into the corn. That looks so good already. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So very, very simple. Uh, and you notice there's no oil. You don't need to, you don't need oil to stick spices to stuff. A little bit of water will go a long way. Uh, and then just another tip on pans. If you use a good hard anodized nonstick pan, and if you want one that's real reasonably priced, I recommend by Letty brand, which is um, available at Bed Bath and Beyond. The, um, the copper crisper pan is one of those as seen on TV. So sometimes you, you'll find it at your, at your big box stores, but Bed Bath and Beyond carries it. And if you get your little $5 coupon in the mail, then it ends up being about a $15 pan. So pretty reasonable. And now size is not super important on these. Um, you know that people like their corn cooked between oh, roughly 10 and 20 minutes, depending on how, how mushy you like it or crispy you like it. Now this recipe is, would, will do like four corn cobs, but I'm just gonna do the little one and a half or here today. And if you give me one second, I'm gonna throw this in my toaster oven for 10 minutes and then We'll talk about my story, and then we'll come back, put barbecue sauce on it, talk a little bit more, throw some, uh, throw it back in the toaster oven, and you'll see how fun and amazing this is, and, and how much fun this is to bring to a barbecue. It's something that people don't expect. So give me two seconds. I'll be right back. Take your time. That looks doesn't that look great, guys? It seems like the hardest part would be cutting it, and I would get Charles to do that. So what, guys? What do you think? First effort. Not too bad, huh? The hard part was doing the little hoop thingy. You guys will watch yesterday's episode. What does your apron say, Jeff? Uh, it says, the revolution starts in the kitchen, vegan. That's great. I love it. <laughs> so I, uh, I used to do um, cooking demonstrations for my local farmer's market. I still do some for our senior centers uh, here locally. Just one second here. You you said a word hard anodized or hot. What could you explain that word? Because I have a pan that says that, and I always wondered what that word meant. And well, it's a nonstick surface, and I and I'm not. It's it's a hardened metal that's not Teflon, and being that it's not Teflon, then it doesn't flake. So that's the benefit for it. Thanks. All right. So give me just a second here. We are screen sharing on, yes? Oh, oh so let me do that. And Sh uh, Cheryl wants to know, where can they get that apron? Um, I bought it on Amazon for like 10 bucks or something. I'm not really sure. It's nothing special. It's the apron itself isn't that great of quality. I just liked it because it was fun. And when I was doing um, cooking demos for our local farmer's market, um, I, you know, kind of let people know that it was, it was plant-based and, and that type of thing. I also do some cooking for the city of Ann Arbor, believe it or not. We do, um, we've done a couple of sustainability seminars and they are encouraging citizens now as part of their, their, they call it A20. So A2 is Ann Arbor uh, going to a net zero carbon emissions uh, and so there's a number of us that have worked and presented with the city to um, help people understand and learn how easy plant-based diets are. Um, another doctor that Dr. Brakey knows that you had mentioned to me earlier is Dr. Melissa Sunderman. She is fantastic. She's a fantastic presenter. Um, and I'll send you a link to that as well. But we did, uh, we did a sustainability seminar uh, with with a city that that was broadcast similar to to this, and then um, I did one with them at the Ann Arbor Farmers Market as well. So um, so it, there's been a movement. Um, our local senior center here, um, a fairly large large one in in Ypsilanti, um, had me. This is second year in a row that we've done um, cooking plant based cooking classes for the seniors. So, and those are available online as well. So it's been, it's been fun. It's been fun in, you know, as a, as a chef, and I think it makes it a little easier for me to, to have shifted my entire diet from, from barbecuing meat to, uh, to eating plants. Um, I, 
I, th I think because I understand flavors and I understand seasoning and spices and things like that, I think it made it a little easier for me to switch. But one of the things that I try to do, and I do it uh, in my Instagram and my Facebook stories, uh, and, and then as well as the recipes on my blog, is I try and show people how easy it is to make really healthy, nutritious meals. So I do a lot of one pot meals. Um, I've got a one pot Peruvian quinoa stew. I've got, uh, you know, a, a couple of uh, masala dishes, a couple of Tuscan dishes that's got like farro and beans and fresh tomatoes and basil, uh, but all in one pot, just so you can do it. And I encourage people too, if you want to eat this way, the best way to do it is if you're going to cook and you're going to spend time in the kitchen and you kind of have to, if, if you're going to do a healthy whole food plant-based diet is if you're gonna cook, cook and do plenty of it. Make a big pot and, and double the recipe if you have to. And then you can put it in freezer portions and or eat it later in the week or that type of thing. And you're not stuck in the kitchen all the time. So I just encourage people to find some of your simple go-tos, throw it together and, uh, and you're good. So are we ready for screen sharing? Well, we sure are. I'm just curious, senior citizens have they ever that you are cooking for? Have they ever been exposed to plant based before? Um, there, there are a few. Yes. Okay. Is that full screen? Perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we there there are a few that have been, but uh, we did one one seminar with them that started a couple of years ago, <clears throat> and actually, Dr. Robert Brakey is the one who presented at that one. And then uh, myself and Mark Ramirez from Chickpea and Bean. Uh, and so we, we did it. And there were a couple of hundred people that came to that, I think. Well, it was over 100. May not have been quite 200, but it was definitely over 100 people. And uh, boy, uh, the reception was amazing. And we had a, uh, a local chef take a couple of recipes, one of mine, one of his, and did it in his commercial kitchen so we could legally serve this to to uh to the public and uh people got to try a couple of dishes and they really enjoyed it so it was it was neat uh and those are the type of things we continue to do all right we ready for this yep okay uh, so this, this is me. This is a, a relatively recent picture of me. Mere selfie, right? Mere's not real clean, but you, you get the idea. Um, I am currently 50 years old. I'm, uh, I think, relatively healthy for my age. A few, you know, m joint issues and, and things like that. You know, I get my share of strains from, from biking and kayaking and, and whatnot, but uh, I don't take any medications. Uh, I don't, my, all my blood panels are excellent and, um, my cholesterol is under 150, my total cholesterol, which is really good. And, uh, my blood pressure usually runs 110 over 65, uh, but that's not always been the case. Uh, we talked a little bit about my barbecue restaurant, uh, which was in Saline, Michigan, south of, um, south of Ann Arbor. And <clears throat> during the course of owning that, I gained uh, about 20 to 25 pounds a year. Uh, and so here's me in 2010. And you can see the difference over just six years of how much weight I had gained. Uh, and, I, and I had just gotten to be a really large guy, 348 pounds and morb morbidly obese. Uh, so in 2016, this is what my health looked like. This was the end of 2016. I had uh, sleep apnea and I was using a CPAP machine. I had severe edema, which is swelling of the extremities. And this is just a picture of my, of my uh, foot and ankle. It was so swollen. Um, if you know what the shoe, a croc shoe is, um, they make those for the kitchen as well. Uh, they call it a bistro croc. And I had to buy a size too large and I had to literally cut the top of the shoe just to fit my foot in it. It was so swollen all the time. Um, I had pre-diabetes, my fasting blood, blood glucose, were, uh, blood sugar was 106. I had high cholesterol, it was over 200. 
Uh, I had relatively high uh, blood pressure. Um, gosh, I forget what the readings were, but at one point it was uh, 160 over something ridiculous. Um, my liver and kidney enzymes were elevated. I was, I was hurting all the time. I was literally taking 21 ibuprofen, 200 milligram ibuprofen, three times, uh, seven, three times a day. So it was 21 ibuprofen and, you know, times 200. That's a lot of milligrams. Uh, very hard on your body. Um, I also was suffering from daily anxiety. And if you, if you experience anxiety or you have in the past, uh, just that gripping, like, uh, you know, something's wrong. I got to go, go, go. Um, I had someone ask me one time, what are you running from? And I said, I just, I'm running from poverty. I don't know. Um, so that that was what my health looked like uh, then. So over the course of 2015 and 2016, um, I went to a number of different doctors, a number of different urgent cares. Uh, I want to say three urgent cares. I, I was uh, admitted at one point to uh, University of Michigan, Michigan Medicine. Um, and then at St. Joseph's Mercy uh, Hospital uh, in Chelsea. And was seeing over a dozen different doctors, not a single one of them discussed diet or nutrition. They just wanted to give me pills and talk about procedures. I had one doctor at University of Michigan suggest a gastric bypass to me. And, uh, and here's the thing. <clears throat> In a small-ish community, uh, if you've got a local business, you brag about it. You know, you tell people about it. You want the business. You want people to come in. So there was no mistaking that, that I was the barbecue guy and that's what I was eating. Um, and there just, you know, just no, no discussion of that. Now, you, you may or may not be aware, but um, at, there are doctors medical doctors receive on the average of 19.6 hours of nutrition education in all of their medical schooling. Now, I know what that is because I've taken the course. It's literally a two credit, one semester course that's really simple, basic nutrition guidelines. Uh, and I'll tell you that, that the way that <laughs> all of these diseases that we're talking about here, diabetes, kidney disease, potential heart disease, the edema, and on down the line, you know, how they treat that and how they recommend nutrition for that is actually eat more fiber, cut your saturated fat. And, and that kind of blew me away in, in, as I'm, uh, as I've kind of changed gears and I'm, um, getting educated and getting my master's in public health, um, that, that, that is actually taught, but it just seems to be ignored or glossed over. Um, so <clears throat> When I checked out of uh, St. Joe's Mercy, the, um, they, I, I was on uh, three prescriptions at the time, uh, Flexerel, which is a muscle relaxer, Meloxicam, which is anti-inflammatory, and I can't remember the other one right off the uh, top of my head. <clears throat> um, and they wanted me to take eight more prescriptions. And my first thought was, oh my God, I'm going to become a, a pill addict here. And I've seen what that, what that does to people uh, getting addicted to pain medications and, and things like that. And I didn't want that. So I talked to my mom and I said, mom, they, they can't come up with an answer. Um, I, I, they were going to check me out and I begged to see the doctor because I thought I was just going to end up back in there. And here's the advice from the doctor. I said, you know, I don't understand why you're, why you're checking me out. I feel horrible. I'm having serious gastrointestinal pain and, and you haven't figured out why I've got this bad edema. And he said, well, you need to stop living like a 35 year old man and start living like a 45 year old man. And I said, hmm, thanks, doc. I, I certainly didn't know what that meant. Uh, so when I, when I checked in with mom and said, you know, they've released me and, 
and they're really not giving me any answers and they want me to um, take eight more prescriptions, she said to me, don't fill them. She said, food is medicine, do the research. She was adamant about it. And uh, so I, you know, I, I really was too sick to, to work. So my partner was managing the business and I did the research, which I will tell you about in just a minute. So I'm gonna stop the screen share here for a minute and we're gonna go back to the kitchen. Nice. So you lost the weight pretty quickly, didn't you? I must have what? You lost the weight fairly quickly. 20 months. 20, and it was 168 pounds? And the total was 168 pounds. That's amazing. It's like so, a person. Yeah. So all I'm going to do on this recipe here is we're going to brush this up with some beautiful barbecue sauce. I am such, I am such a barbecue sauce fan. Um, you know, you can, you can use about any barbecue sauce, uh, except as you probably are aware with barbecue sauce, a lot of them have high fructose corn syrup. A lot of them won't tell you, but when they have Worcestershire in it, it oftentimes is not vegan, it's made from anchovy. So if you're wanting to do whole food plant-based, it's difficult to find. I know there's, I think Annie's makes a vegan barbecue and there's a, a few other ones like that. Um, but you've got to watch those ingredients a little bit to make sure that you're not just putting straight sugar or a bunch of anchovies on your corn. So you can see how beautiful that is. You just get a nice little thick coating on these. Yum is all I can say. Well, I tell you what, it's making my mouth water. It smells <laughs> very good. And I did have lunch, but... All right, I'm gonna throw this back in the toaster oven for 10 minutes. Has your girlfriend made these in the air fryer? Yes, she has. That'd be great. Yeah, she has done that. Um, and they, and they will curl up just a little bit in the air fryer, which I don't think is a big deal, but I tended to not like um, anything of my barbecue dry. So I, I prefer it with a little more moisture. So air fryer is not necessarily my favorite because it'll dry it out. Toaster oven's easy, regular oven's easy. That little copper crisper pan that I showed you is easy. You can add a little bit of water to it for some moisture because I don't want dried out corn. Um, and then of course the barbecue sauce helps so it's not dried, so it's not dried out. But you'll see when it comes out, it's nice and sticky and messy like, like ribs. So. so let's go back to mom's advice. Uh, maybe you've, you've uh, heard of Dr. Michael Clapper. Uh, you know, he says, uh, the problem is the food and it's been the food all along. And he is absolutely right. So when I uh, decided to do the research, um, I found uh, Dr. Andrew Viles' uh, anti-inflammatory diet. So what I did was no beef, chicken or pork. Uh, I had cut my dairy consumption down from cheese on everything. Um, and cottage cheese and yogurt all the time and ice cream almost every day to very minimal, a little bit of cheese here and there. And uh, I ate some fish and eggs. Um, I, it was mostly fruits and vegetables, lots of whole grain dishes and things like that. I wasn't uh, eating a bunch of refined carbohydrates. And you can see the results, which is amazing. In, uh, in 100 days or 80 days, I lost 100 sorry, in a hundred days, I lost 80 pounds. Uh, that edema went away in about three and a half weeks. Uh, in that time period, that first hundred days, I was able to get rid of my CPAP and my, my sleep improved big time and my blood pressure went to normal. 
And, uh, and I was just feeling absolutely amazing. And about five months into that journey, maybe a little less, I watched um, Forks Over Knives. And I decided that I, I was going to stop eating dairy products. And uh, the first thing that happened that was amazing is that in, in about another three weeks, that lifelong gripping anxiety that I had just went away. I mean, it was gone. And there is some good science behind that as well, I understand. Uh, that there are casomorphins in dairy that hit the same receptor in the brain as uh, opioids. And that perhaps many of our emotional issues in Western society could be directly linked to dairy consumption. So if there's one thing I can say you do for your health, get rid of dairy. You're not a baby cow. Um, you know, <laughs> humans grow from a, a average birth weight of seven and a half pounds to 20 pounds in one year. And cows go from a hundred pounds of birth weight to 700 pounds in a year. Uh, so seven times their, their weight versus our two and a half times. So very different nutritional needs and we're just not baby cows. So the second thing that happened um, is right about that time, I decided to uh, just do a routine doctor visit. I had already lost a bunch of weight, uh, just kind of a routine checkup with my general, general physician. And um, he, whoops, I'm going to go back. Uh, and he recommended that I take a statin because my cholesterol was like 202 or something like that. And I said, hmm, well, from my experience so far, I, I'm just going to stop eating eggs <laughs> and I'll watch my cholesterol drop. And he said, even vegans need statins. And I said, that's the last time I see you. <laughs> and at that point, I had started to learn a little bit better. I had found... Um, Dr. Greger's nutritionfacts.org. Um, and I was starting to find some more resources. Um, I started looking at my protein sources and I realized that, that I would never be protein deficient eating a plant-based diet, that all plants have all essential amino acids and your body doesn't care where you get those amino acids from. It takes them in, it breaks it down, it assembles them in protein chains. You could eat grass all day, literally all day, you'd have to eat enough calories and get enough protein. I mean, it's the, the stinking thinking on protein. And that was, that was probably the hardest thing for me to get past uh, was that I needed to um, somehow, you know, increase my protein to build muscle and all these things. I, I had been on the high protein diet for a number of years and I just needed to realize that I, it's just so not a concern. You know, eat your, eat your, eat more beans if you're worried about it. But what we need is fiber and antioxidants more than anything. So, you know, in, in mid, uh, 2017, this is a picture of me. Uh, you can see that there's a big difference from the barbecue guy in our second slide here. Uh, and I was still, still losing weight. Um, you know, I just stayed steadfast on, on it and there's the result. Um, so right toward the end of my, my 20 months that I had lost 168 pounds, I decided to hit the gym and I was kind of curious what my muscles would do and things like that. And I, I was amazed. Um, in my younger years, I went to the gym quite a bit and I'd get that lactic acid burn really bad and I'd be done. I'd be wiped out. Um, and, and what I found going to the gym is that I could do a full body workout, both upper and, and lower, um, take a little break, have an orange, and I could go back and do it all again. And oftentimes I biked four and a half miles up to the, to the uh, rec center and back and felt great with tons of energy. Um, so today, uh, certainly a plant-based advocate. Um, my blood panels are absolutely perfect. There's still no protein deficiency after four years. Um, you know, I, I gained a little bit of weight during the pandemic, but it's so easy to, to be mindful and and take that off that, you know, I know I'll never be a big guy again. Um, you know, I, I've been building muscle, I kayak, I bike, I do a lot of the things that, that I really love to do. Um, I, I did pretty successfully when I was heavy and working on my, on my feet, 80, 90 and hundred hours a week, I pretty successfully destroyed my knees. 
So running probably isn't in the picture for me, but I find other activities that I enjoy. And they say you really only need about 150 minutes of moderate activity weekly, which is a 20 minute walk every day. Uh, so that's what I did to lose most of the weight. I didn't kill myself in the gym. This was just the last few, you know, last the last 10 or 20 pounds. I wanted to kind of see what was going on. And you can see the difference in, in three years, in 20 months, actually. Uh, the picture was in 2019, but in, in, in 20 months, well, yeah, 20 months, um, that there was just a, a huge difference in, uh, in size and health and everything else. So hope you guys enjoyed uh, hearing a little bit about me. And uh, we got a little bit of cooking demo. You know, Chef AJ, I was going to um, do maybe barbecued uh, fooled pork sandwiches and found that you had done that recently. So I said, oh, well, let's do another yeah, fun one. Get your version, but this looks like an amazing uh, re recipe because it's something I wouldn't have thought of. You don't eat the middle of the corn, though, do you? I mean, no. You, yeah, no. I didn't think so. It, you, yeah. Got some questions for it, if you don't mind, like Iris. You, do you, you have bet. And let me, have grab, let me grab the barbecue. Yeah. Do, do you have a book out? Maybe you can come back. So the answer to that is sort of, <laughs> uh, but let me show you these ribs real quick. Barbecue, barbecue ribs. Uh, you see they're beautiful. They're nice and tender. That's falling, falling, whoops, move this over. You can see that that's starting to kind of come off of here nicely. You could put a little more, more barbecue sauce on there if you wanted to, you could eat them just like that. So as far as um, a book is concerned, um, I am part of, a cookbook uh, that is put out by PBNSG, the plant-based nutrition support group called Perfectly Plant-Based. I'm one of about a hundred chefs in there. And I have, I believe six, or no, I'm sorry, one of over a hundred recipes. So over 20 chefs, I think 22. And, um, and I have six recipes in that cookbook. Um, but I do publish all of my recipes on my blog at arespectfullife.com. So feel free to go get them. It's fantastic. Talk about the time frame. Was there a period of time where you had already started making dietary changes, but were still barbecuing meat? Like, was there some intersection there? Uh, so not, not really. I mean, the, when it came to the business, what I ended up doing, I, I was still involved with it for about three and a half, four months. Uh, and then first of the year in January, I just, you know, I handed it over to my partner and kind of washed my hands of it. Um, you know, I, I tried to get my partner to, to, you know, make some changes and put some healthier items on the menu. Cause I felt like, you know, it was killing me. It's, it's killing our customers too. And that's probably not right. Uh, and I hadn't really made the food connection, uh, there, uh, well, I had, I had at that point and, uh, and there wasn't any, any changing that at the restaurant, I don't think. And, uh, so I was doing the taxes and, and the, uh, managing, um, catering accounts. And we had, uh, a couple of concession trailers that we, that we would book all over the place, uh, for festivals and, and events. So, um, I, I was just managing that part. And then, you know, after a few months, I said, you know, I, I got to do something different here. Uh, so, and then four months uh, after leaving the barbecue restaurant uh, burnt down. So <laughs> I think they have a word for that. Uh, karma. I think that's what we call it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So luckily no one was injured. Um, it was, it happened in the middle of the night. There was uh, greasy rags by a sparking electric outlet. And, uh, and the business was forever lost. Um, and, you know, perhaps they could have restarted it, but chose not to for whatever reason, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, so that, that, was the, that was the case there. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because uh, in, my, in my little town of Saline, Michigan, the population's about 9,000 in the city and surroundings a, a bit bigger than that. Our county's maybe 300,000, but, in Saline, I knew a lot of people. Um, I knew the mayor and the police force and the city council and the and the um, um, 
oh, chamber of commerce directors and you know different people, different other business community leaders, um, because we're business people in a in a small community. And when I when I left that, I I have to be real honest. I felt very disconnected and um, didn't have a big sense of purpose. And one of the things that that I did was uh, I had read the Blue Zones book, and you know found out how important that sense of community is to longevity. So what I switched to doing, um, well, probably about a year later was doing uh, cooking demonstrations at our local farmer's market and showing people how to do oil-free plant-based foods. Cool. Hey, a couple of questions on the recipe. First of all, you started with raw corn on the cob, right? You didn't cook it in, right? Yep. And here's an interesting question is if you could, uh, from Kathy, what about doing the corn on the grill and foil packets on a top shelf with high flame? Um, so I've not tried it. I, the, the, the thing about corn is that it'll, you could boil it for 10 minutes. You could steam it for 10 minutes up to maybe 20 minutes before it really gets mushy. Uh, so almost any method is going to work. Um, now for the, the spices to stick, I would say that probably the, the, uh, you know, the first round, the oven method is, is a better idea. Oven or toaster oven or air fryer or something like that, just to get those spices to sort of uh, dry in there. Or you could even uh, do that on an open grill. There's, if your flame wasn't um, burning the corn, you could do that that way too. I mean, there really are a lot of ways to do this. So you're just basically doing a spice rub like you would if you, if it was a, a meat product. And you could do that with, with anything that that you can get spices into. But the cool thing about corn is that it has all of those places in between the corn where all those spices just combine and go in there. And the reason that people like barbecue isn't because the meat tastes good. If, if the meat tasted good, you wouldn't need to barbecue it and you wouldn't need to spice the hell out of it. And you wouldn't, you know, you just eat it. You, you, but we season it and we think that that's what food is. It's the spices that you like. So doing this, you're getting- that's the thing. The spices and the sauces are always made of plants. They're not made of meat. And that's what I never understand with people. People, most people don't eat raw meat. Oh, no. Disgusting. And if you've, if you've ever had just a, a plain burger in your life that wasn't seasoned, it's, it's disgusting. And now after eating a Beyond Burger, I don't know how anyone would ever eat a, a regular ground beef burger again. They're, they're so good. Yeah, it's so weird that people eat cows. I, I don't get it. But um, Joe says, you mentioned a vegan pulled pork recipe. Do you make it with banana skins? No, um, I do not. So basically I use uh, green canned jackfruit. You can get it for $1.99 at Trader Joe's. Um, I take the chunks out, I drain the can, take the chunks out and split it with a fork. And then I literally water saute some red onion. I put that that kind of broken up jackfruit in there. And I put however much barbecue sauce I feel like eating that day. If it's, you know, it might be lighter. It might be, you know, if I want it real saucy and you can play with it, it's really easy. Add barbecue sauce. And if you feel like it needs more, add more. Simmer it for about 15, not even 15 minutes. So you can simmer it for like 10 minutes. Just get those onions translucent, throw the, throw the uh, uh, jackfruit in there, throw the, the barbecue sauce in your, in your pan to simmer and, you've got a meal in, in 10 minutes. It's one of the easiest things. Yeah, that's great. There's a couple of questions about the fact that you lost a lot of weight, you lost it quickly, and they're wondering, do you have a lot of loose skin? And if so, how did you deal with it? So um, I think that, that the answer is yes and no. Um, comparatively, compared to other people, I don't have as much loose skin, but I have some. Um, and the... the um, I wasn't heavy for that long and I have really thick skin, really kind of generally healthy, thick skin. So I think that I had less hanging skin than most people, but it certainly is an issue. And, and I haven't done anything about it. Um, I don't find it particularly uh, detrimental to my health or, or getting in my way or anything like that. Um, but I know a lot of people that have done uh, tummy tucks and, and had the, the loose skin removed and, and things like that. 
Um, I'm not really a, a big uh, knives person, as in uh, procedures and things like that. Uh, for example, for, for um, knees, um, I don't want anything fake in my knees because your body tends to reject those things. So I'm doing everything I can to keep my weight down, to keep the leg muscle strengthened. I don't want to have to go through knee replacement surgery. Um, and you know, that's the same with a lot of people who do, uh, breast implants, they end up encapsulating and, and your body tries to push that out. And there's a lot of people that get them removed. Um, people that have knee and hip replacement, uh, surgeries oftentimes have, have problems with that and they, and they, uh, have to get them replaced again. Um, or, and there's tons of lawsuits, you name it from, from, um, hernia meshes and everything else. Your body just sort of rejects that that thing. So for me personally, I just, I want to avoid the surgeries. Um, I, I don't think that's supernatural for us, but, uh, to each their own. I, I don't judge somebody that does. I understand why you'd want to. Yeah. Well, we're kindred spirits. Cause that's what finally was my impetus to lose weight in my fifties was that I broke my knee and I was told I needed surgery. And I was like, I, I mean, I went to a pedodontist till I was 50. So you think I'm going to go in and get surgery? Uh, uh-uh. uh. Hey, you, I was listening to a podcast you were on, I think it might've been plant trainers. And you talked about it when you were in the hospital and the doctor didn't even see you, but wanted to discharge you with a bunch of medications or something like that. And did you ever go back to him and say, Hey, look, I'm better without your medication. Um, I, he's on my list. <laughs> I, I have not, but I definitely want to. Um, I have, I have the reports available to me. So I know uh, who the doctor is. Uh, yeah. He's on my, he's on my list. Uh-huh. And I'll tell them who my doctors are now, which are all plant-based folks. Uh, we are fortunate to have a large group of lifestyle medicine professionals in the region. And uh, there's great options. Uh, and same with my, my former general practitioner. I'd love to run into him. He's the guy who told me uh, vegans need statins and I, I could never give up my pork. So. Oh, my goodness. Uh, question from, where did I see? I just saw it. I'm sorry, where it skipped. Ah, uh, you heard it's from Cindy. Has your family adopted this way of eating, or any friends that you might? Um, so my my mother was uh, a was a mostly plant based eater, and she has since she is the one who watched Forks Over Knives with me, and also ditched dairy. So uh, so she's not not doing that any longer. So she's about ninety nine percent plant based, and. Um, you know, I've had a, had some friends that, that eat a lot healthier as a, as a result. Um, I have no idea how many people like went vegan, so to speak, because of me. I, I really don't know. Um, uh, but yeah, I had, I had a good, very close friend of mine who is a pharmacist that said to me at one point, uh, well, I took him to eating you alive, the, the movie. And uh, he said, you know, I watch people come in the pharmacy all day long and they would rather have their pills over a lifestyle change. And just, and for him, I got him to uh, do a little challenge with me and he ditched dairy and increased the fiber in his diet. He was a 13 year diabetic with 130 units of insulin. And uh, he was able to get off his insulin in like a week was ridiculous. That's amazing. And it was interesting that you didn't make all the changes at first and you still had some results. Well, right. Um, the being in the, in the science end of things, it's, it's pretty clear that, um, if you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose weight. Uh, and, and you'll hear, uh, anecdotal stories all the time of people losing weight, uh, doing a keto diet. And it's true. You can lose weight on a keto diet, but the, the long-term effects are that you kill your arteries. Um, (laughs) and you know, there's, there's plenty of misinformation out there about that. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is, is if you, if you, um, reduce your calories, you're going to, to lose weight. Um, so yes, I wasn't a hundred percent plant-based, but really close. I mean, maybe a piece of fish and a few eggs a week, uh, at that point. And then I quit that and, and, and at that point I had already lost over a hundred pounds. So, 
That's amazing. Have you entered any competitions like barbecue competitions or chili cook-offs? Uh, no, I, I thought about doing a chili cook-off. I was invited to a couple of them. Um, I have a really interesting um, chili recipe that uh, when people try, they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best. It used to be uh, back in the barbecue days, it was a brisket chili. Um, but one of the interesting things that we, that we put in it that was way different from everybody else's Michigan cherries and coffee, which gives a really interesting, um, you know, sweet and, and balanced flavor to the, to the chili. So there is a Michigan cherry chili recipe on my blog as well. Wow. That sounds good. Well, speaking of recipes, there's a question. What are your three favorite meals? And maybe you could walk us through a day of what, what, what Jeff eats in a day to maintain okay. his health physique. So it, it, a lot of what I eat kind of depends on my day. Um, there are, because I'm in school some days or yeah, some days, uh, and some months out of the year, I end up sitting a lot. And when that's the case, I almost always skip breakfast. Uh, so I will eat a uh, kind of a large lunch at, uh, say 1130. And I try and do my evening meal by six o'clock. So eating in sort of that restricted window helps a lot. And especially if you skip breakfast, breakfast, you do cut a lot of calories by doing that. Um, but if I have got to be on the go, you, you got to fuel up for that. So, uh, a typical day, if I'm, if I'm busy is I'll have a bowl of oatmeal with blueberries. Uh, I always add a couple of tablespoons of ground flaxseed to my oatmeal. Um, lunches vary a lot and dinners vary a lot. Um, I tend to be a little bit of a moody eater, so I kind of want to be in the mood for it, but at the same time, I'm not super picky either. Um, what I, what I encourage people to do is write down your 25 go-to meals. Now, most people don't do too many more than that. And whatever those meals are, whether it's, um, Kung Po chicken and Mexican and pizza and whatever it might be, um, write down those go-to recipes and then find your healthy replacements for them. Um, I, I, as far as favorites are concerned, I have, I had mentioned earlier, I have a Tuscan farro and bean dish that I absolutely love. I'm a fan of fennel and it's got uh, fennel in it. So it's uh, onion and tomato and garlic and vegetable broth and rosemary, some other herbs, uh, fennel seed, um, um, farro or farro, some people call it, uh, which is absolutely my favorite grain for two reasons. It's a really kind of a chewy, it's like a You've not had it. It's a kind of like a barley, but a lot more firm. Uh, so it's very chewy and it has a little bit of a nutty flavor to it. And it happens to be extremely satiating. So by the time I get the farro and the chickpeas in there, along with tomatoes and a big old handful of spinach and some garlic and onion and the spices, um, that's a great one pan meal. I eat that a lot. Um, the barbecue jackfruit that we mentioned, I do often. Um, two other go-to meals for me is I do a lentil potato and spinach curry. Um, and the, and I just happen to love curry dishes, but that one, um, if you, if you use red lentils, when you, when you do that, uh, chop up your potatoes and your carrots and your onions and throw your lentils and your spinach in there and some vegetable broth and curry powder. And you've got a, you've got a meal in, in a half an hour. That's very delicious. And I usually put that on California brown basmati rice. Um, so that, uh, that is another go-to for me. Um, I think tacos is a, is a favorite for sure. And, and it's so easy to do, uh, to do tacos plant-based. Uh, you've got rice and you've got beans and you can get a whole grain tortilla or a mesa, uh, like a corn tortilla. Um, I make a cauliflower walnut uh, taco meat, which I absolutely love. Um, and I, I make a big batch of it, put it in portions, throw it in my freezer and in portion bags and take it out and heat it up when I want to do a taco night. And, you know, of course you get the salsa and you get the fresh lettuce and the fresh, uh, cherry tomatoes. I've got a pretty cool garden. So, so the, uh, the tomatoes are, are fun to use in virtually everything. 
so I'd say that that the barbecue jackfruit taco night, uh, the I, the chili I mentioned to you, I make fairly often. The lentil, potato, and spinach curry, and the Tuscan uh, farro and bean. Those are probably my favorites and my go tos. Wow, but you you don't make like thirty different breakfasts, thirty different lunches, thirty different dinners. You have your favorites that you like to repeat, right? Yeah, yeah, and. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big high fiber guy. So if you can find a good quality, high fiber, um, granola, or even Kashi brand cereal is, is pretty decent overall, as far as sugar content and, and that type of thing, uh, is concerned, but I'm generally, you know, a banana and maybe a piece of uh, zucchini bread or something for breakfast or a bowl of cereal or oatmeal and, and blueberries or, once in, one of the things that I try and do is cook grains every week. I've gotten out of habit a little bit lately, um, but oftentimes I'll take uh, and cook a pot of quinoa. And so then I'll take the quinoa and throw it in uh, a bowl with some, some berries and some nuts and seeds, and that's breakfast. Uh, so it's a good, good, healthy whole grain uh, type thing. And then, um, you know, lunch varies. Oh, here's the other recipe I wanted to mention uh, to you. And I, don't even remember if it's on my blog, but it's really super easy. Um, bake a sweet potato, um, cut, up a, cut up a half of an onion and, and just water saute it a little bit, cut up half of a zucchini and throw that in there with it, throw a half a can of uh, black beans in there with a little cumin and chili powder and use a little water, or use some of the juice from the can uh, and it'll make a, a sort of a stewy slurry and throw that on top of your sweet potato. And it's amazing. That's one of my favorite meals. Um, and that's another one I eat real often. Wow. Yeah. Here's a question from Monarch that when you talked about the cherries in the chili is a Michigan cherry, a sweet cherry. It is. And so what I usually recommend, because I know not everybody is from Michigan is if you can buy the sweet black cherries frozen uh, that are pitted, you can use those just fine. And actually uh, I've used in a pinch, I've used strawberries in it and it works too. Very good. Let's see, oh, here's a question from Marcy. So I, we know the no oil, how strict are you with sugar and salt? Um, so because, so um, last year my brother passed away and he had a very, he was younger than me too, 47, uh, very high salt diet. Um, and I know from studies that salt is very difficult for your arteries. So I'm careful about my salt intake. Now you have to have a little bit of salt in your diet to keep your electrolytes balanced, but I eat almost no processed foods. So, so I don't get too concerned about putting a half a teaspoon of salt in a dish or something like that, or using a salt shape shaker, but I try and keep my personal uh, salt intake under 1600 milligrams a day. Um, and as far as sugar is concerned, um, I, it's not something that I use. I, I have a soda stream and I use um, stevia sweetener in it, which is a whole plant sweetener. Um, but I, I just don't, you know, there's very, there are very little sugar overall in, in, my, in my diet. I don't really put it in, in anything. Um, you know, I'll have a very occasional vegan ice cream or something or, or a carrot cake from a, from a, a, a vegan place locally, but uh, it's pretty rare. I mean, it's just not something that I am too concerned about. Yeah. So you're not worried about gaining the weight back. You seem pretty confident. Um, so it's, it's pretty easy to gain weight. It doesn't matter, you know, how you do it. If you, if you're not mindful, if you're sitting, if you're, if you're stagnant and eating uh, huge meals, you're going to gain weight. Uh, so I've, I have had to watch it, but, um, not so much on the, on the sugar side, you know, I don't, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a hundred percent whole food plant-based, but I, I don't cook with oil. I don't cook with sugar. I don't put extra salt in things. Um, and I, and I'm careful, but I might have a, a vegan pizza out, uh, or something like, or a beyond burger. If friends invite me somewhere, then that's the option. Um, I might do that, but, but generally speaking, I, I eat at home most of the time. Well, home is my favorite restaurant. Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah, and, it's, and it's disappointing too. You go out, even, even a Beyond Burger out isn't near as good as what you can do at home. <laughs> gotcha. Anne says, do you, do you like balsamic vinegar and use it? 
So the answer to that is yes, I do. I have a lot of different balsamic vinegars um, and I use it um, mostly on salad, but I wanna warn people on vinegars that people don't realize. So a lot of people use it very liberally. It's actually kind of hard on your gut. And the reason being is that vinegar is antimicrobial. So too much, is, it's, it's be like drinking alcohol. You're killing your gut microbiome. Uh, if you're doing too much vinegar. So I use it very sparingly. I actually make champagne vinegars. I've got, you know, I, I uh, season them and do that myself and give them as gifts. Um, but I use some balsamics. I've got flavored bal balsamics. Um, I think I've got a passion fruit and an elderberry in my, in my uh, cabinet right now. Um, so I use those occasionally and um, you know, have mine on the counter that I make as well. Um, you know, that's like got a, a infused strawberry mint. Um, and I'll use that to deglaze a, a pan if I want to caramelize some onions or something like that, but uh, not, and, and then there's a couple of recipes where I'll use some apple cider vinegar in it. Um, but again, something you, you need to be concerned about not overdoing it on. Right, well, you're going to be adding two new flavors to your repertoire because you'll get a gift for being on the show and you can choose oh flavors you like. Well, you are such an inspiration and people are saying, please have them back and make some of the recipes that you mentioned were your favorites. And of course, we'd love to have you back. And thanks for the work that you're doing. Thank you. I enjoyed uh, being on here yeah. and uh, enjoy the day. I love your story. And I can't wait to try that recipe. It's just, that's all I'm going to be thinking about now. I just, I have everything but the corn, of course. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's sweet corn season in Michigan. So we can go down to, there's a produce place and I can literally fill an entire bag up for a dollar. So That's such a great idea. Thank you so much, Jeff. Welcome. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. We have a bonus show today at 2 p.m. I hope you'll come back in two hours when my guest is Dr. Herman Ponzer. He is the author of Burn and the Exercise Paradox. So we will hear the truth about how much exercise actually contributes to weight loss. Were you an avid exerciser before? Um, no. No. Uh, and as a matter of fact, as I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't lose my weight with exercise. It was with diet. You, you cannot outrun a bad diet. Right. And that's a spoiler alert. I think Dr. Ponser is going to say the same thing. He lived with the Hudza tribe and he, so I can't wait to hear from him. Just thank you so much, Jeff. It was a pleasure getting to know you. All right. Take Bye -bye. care.